So like this is an interesting one if you are if you're telling the history. There's Berkemeyer. There's the old the the Wartburg, there's the chapel, mm -hmm. the auditorium, and that's Reverend Van Boss, who becomes the next director when he's too ill to continue. There's Van Boss. This is his first year, and what he's promoting is the fact that they had a donation of a movie projector. So they would twice a week the kids would go and the elderly would go to the Berkmeyer Auditorium to see movies. And he's the one who mentions that they were taking films on the campus. Wouldn't that be amazing if that is the first projector that was donated here? And we have this enormous wheel of film. This orphanage, uh, as, and that's what Wartburg was opened as, an orphanage. It was really for um, kids who were the orphan children of, of Civil War veterans. And they weren't necessarily Lutheran kids. They weren't necessarily white. They, were, they weren't necessarily free. It was a mixture of all of the kinds of people that made up the United States, um, the orphans being the victims of uh, having lost their parents in that war. Well, first of all, it's important to say that Wartburg is a ministry of the Lutheran Church. It's a ministry of both the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. It's always been a ministry of, of Lutherans in New York since its inception in 1860. Six. It, it was started by um, a, a pastor by the name of uh, Passavant. Uh, he was well known in the East Coast um, as someone who was interested in, uh, in, in the relationship between the church and the society. The Lutheran Church, when it began uh, in the 1500s in Germany, the, there was a real sense um, already in Martin Luther and in those who followed him that the job of the church was to take care of the whole community. First time I was on the campus of Wartburg was in September of 1967, almost 50 years ago. And I was a student at Concordia College in Bronxville, just up the street, and every Saturday I came here to cut the grass, to mow the lawn with the orphans. So I've known uh, Wartburg for almost 50 years. The only thing I could say about my first impression was I said, wow, uh, because it was a lot of land, a lot of grass to mow, and it was uh, mostly uh, uh, orphans, not senior citizens as it mostly is today. Wartburg is a fully caring community. We've had trouble even knowing what to call it. Is it a senior center? Is it adult care? Is it, and what will it be? I mean, if it was once an orphanage and it's now adult uh, care for elderly people, what might it be next? I think our creative aging program is unique and ahead of its time. And that actually helps us in our messaging uh, pierce through um, everyone else's message. You know, um, it's, it's really um, gives us an opportunity to talk about those things that, that are obvious to us, but have yet to become real national issues. Uh, dementia care and services, um, unprecedented need that's gonna grow exponentially over the next five and 10 years, um, and there's no cure. The whole creative aging that the Wartburg is doing now is really a first. I mean, it's taking uh, getting older um, and saying, your life isn't over. This is not a warehouse. This is not a place where you wait to die. This is a place where you come to live. And that's just different. It's a, it's a different way of thinking. I was born in Harlem, New York. I left to lose my parents when I was five years old. I was placed here at the Warburg, uh, it was called the Warburg Orphan Farm School at that time. I was placed here with two older brothers and an older sister. And my sister, she went up to the, the Girl Scouts and my brothers and placed in the, the, the kindergarten. And um, 
And when we got there, they had this large picnic table full of toys. <laughs> so, and we had a house parent called, um, named Elfrida Gross. And she's the one that I think really gave us a foundation when we came here. We all thought of her as mother. I say to everyone like this, I may have grown up in an orphanage, but I was never made to feel like I was an orphan. All these pages surrounded by photographs of the orphans. They had the orphans photographed. It's amazing. But Berkemeyer really understood the power of images. The Reverend Dr. Gottlieb Berkemeyer was the second president, and he served for 36 years. I think he really put Wartburg on the map and was a real renaissance man in many ways. Great communicator, prolific writer, and, and unbelievably successful at making a case, telling the story. He was a real iconic figure in the history uh, of this organization and I think, I think is the most important chapter. Uh, and most interesting to me. Um, it was a time when there was no safety net. I think the, the relationship between the staff and the orphans, which was a parental relationship, flipped over to be the relationship between the staff and the, and the elderly. And that kind of basic understanding of what familial love is kind of passed on through. There was no senior care here in the beginning. The first uh, senior building was built. It was called the Mary Louise Hines Building. One thing about coming to Warburg now, and the difference with whether it be in adult care or whether it was children before, is that now you still get that sense of home. We are all family. You know, everyone we touch, everyone we have relationships with is family. Where there's a need, you know, people deserve care and services. And our organization, uh, the Lutheran Heritage, um, you know, really creates a calling and mandate for, for those particularly who are underserved and need care. So that's, that's always been the common thread and always will be. I see that played out uh, in all over the campus because the staff here, who's been here for many, many years, many of them, that staff um, is to all the rest of us family. And this is the original ledger begun by Reverend Halls when he came from Pennsylvania with his wife and the six orphans, as we know now. We have a safety net now, so, you know, fast forward 150 years, we have third party payers and government payers. Um, we're very much underfunded, and so at the same time you have uh, challenges with, with reimbursement and, and dementia population in particular, you have an unprecedented need. So $50 million organization, 650 employees, um, you know, really at a crossroads of, of health care reform, post-acute senior care reforms, the movement to home and community-based models of care. Uh, at the same time, you've got a population change and, and real constraints in terms of reimbursement. Very challenging time. People here feel the passion. They have every level of care here. I think of it as full circle. Um, never thinking that I'd be coming back, or it seems like I never really left, coming back and um, being able to um, give back to society and, and other people's lives the way that someone did for me.